Hello everyone, this is the joy of reading and welcome to a new episode of my Dante series. In this episode we will keep reading and translating the first canto of Dante's Inferno. As you may notice, a line is missing at the top and that's because, as I told you, I won't be able to read and translate every single line. I'll have to skip some parts and in order to begin this new episode after a full stop, I had to cut one line and uh, that's why one verse is missing. In the previous episode, Dante found himself in a dark forest and then went out of it without knowing how. Then he noticed a hill which represents salvation and he tried to climb on this hill but the arrival of an animal, sort of a cheetah, prevented him from doing so and the cheetah pushed him back towards the forest. In the part that I had to skip, Dante explains that despite meeting the cheetah, he felt quiet because uh, it was daylight, uh, the sun was shining, the weather was warm and he felt pressured. Now he says, Ma non si che paura non mi desse, la vista che m'apparve d'un leone. Questi parea che contra me venesse, con la testa alta e con rabbiosa fame, si che parea che l'aere ne tremesse. So Dante felt pressured because of the weather and of the sunlight, but not so much that I wasn't scared by the sight of a lion who appeared to me. He looked as if he were coming against me with his head lifted and ravenous hunger, so that the air appeared to fear him. The cheetah of the previous episode was not just a cheetah, but the representation of a particular sin, probably the sin of lust. In the same way, this lion is not just a lion, but it is the personification of another sin, uh, in this case, the sin of pride. Now Dante meets a third animal, ed una lupa, che di tutte brame pareva carca nella sua magrezza, e molte genti fe già viver grame. And a female wolf, that of every desire seemed to be full, despite her meagerness, and caused many people to live miserably. Dante specifies that this is a female wolf, and the female wolf represents greed, so, lust, pride, and greed are the two sins, uh, sorry, the three sins, which prevent Dante from reaching salvation. Here, Dante writes again about this wolf. Questa mi porve tanto di gravezza, con la paura che di sua vista, che io perdei la speranza dell'altezza. E qual è quei che volontieri acquista, e giugne il tempo che perderlo face, che in tutti i suoi pensier piange e s'attrista. Tal mi fece la bestia senza pace, che venendomi incontro poco a poco, mi ripegneva là dove il sol tace. She brought such attention upon me, with the fear that her aspect inspired, that I lost the hope of the height, so the hope of reaching the top of the hill. And like someone who willingly acquires, and the time comes that makes him lose, so that he weeps and is saddened in all, all his thoughts. Such made me that beast without peace, who, coming against me little by little, pushed me back where the sun is silent. So here we have something, something special, um, the sentence il soltace, or the sun is silent. That is a so-called synesthesia. Uh, it is a rhetorical device where two perceptions which belong to different senses are brought together in one image. So, for example, um, the expression warm color or cold color is a synesthesia because a color has to do with sight and um, the adjective warm or cold have nothing to do with, with uh, sight. So we associate warm color with a color 
color right like red or yellow or orange but that's our association because warm means something else and that's the case with the sentence here so in soltace associates one uh, visual visual image of the sun with um, something which can be heard so silence and uh, the idea behind this is to enhance our perception by involving more of one sense uh, in th at the same time. So Dante tries to involve our sight but our hearing as well in order to enhance his per perceptions. Mentre chi rovinava in basso loco, dinanzi agli occhi mi si fu offerto chi per lungo silenzio pare a fioco. Quando vidi costui nel gran deserto, miserere di me, gridai a lui, qual che tu sii, o d'ombra o d'uomo certo. So Dante is pushed back in, towards the forest by these three animals. While I was rushing downwards, in front of my eyes appeared to me someone who looked dim because of his long silence. So somebody had been probably there all the time, but he had been silent and Dante hadn't spotted him. As I saw him in the deserted place, have pity on me, I cried to him, whether you are a shadow or a living man. So we still don't know it, but this is Virgil, the Latin poet who is going to accompany Dante on his travel. We will talk about Virgil in the next episode. Thank you for listening. And if you're interested in my Dante series, you can follow my channel on YouTube and my Facebook page, The Joy of Reading. Good night.